everybody clap your hands right here. We will fight and we will win. Come on, that's what we say. We will fight and we will win. And we will win. We speak victory. We speak victory to every trial we're in. We are overcomers. We are overcomers. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. No longer defeated. No longer defeated. But we're winners now. We're winners. Clap your hands right here. Come on, SOB. Woo! We always win. Let's do it one more time. Come on, y'all. We will fight. And we will win. And we will win. We seek victory to every trial we're in. We are overcomers. We are overcomers. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. No longer defeated. No longer defeated. Woo! But we're winners now. We're winners. We always win. Let's go, Felicia. We always win. We always win. We always win. We always win. No matter what may come my way, we always win. Say it again. We always win. We always win. No matter what the circumstance, we always win. Probably in the afterlife. Yeah, this is heaven sent. Yeah, this is what that life feel like. Yeah, download God, download God, God. I had to download God, download God, download God, download God, God. I had to download God, download God, download God, download God, God. I had to download God, download God, download God, download God, God. I had to download. Man, I gotta speak a word, gotta speak a word Gotta speak a message where I thought there was none Yeah, it's time to be heard, I gotta let you hear it Just be that daily bread, giving none of the sun Yeah, it's time for a purge, I gotta let it out I gotta speak life where I thought there was none Gotta break ties, live, let his will be done And we ask God to 
want you to know in every facet of this worship experience on tonight. We know it's only Tuesday, Fresh Oil, but I need somebody right now to clap your hands and open up your mouth. Come on and stand on your feet and just begin to give him glory. Come on, just begin to give him glory. Come on, just begin to give him glory. Come on, you made it through another work day. You made it through another couple of days. And God, we say thank you on tonight. God, we say thank you on tonight. God, we say thank you for keeping our mind. We say thank you for keeping our hearts, oh God. We say thank you for crucifying our flesh, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So God, tonight, God, we lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up. And God, we want you to know that for your glory, God, for your glory, God, we'll do anything. Come on, open up your mouth, lift your hands. Give him worship. Give him honor. Give him praise. And we love him on tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all stay right there. Stay right there. Worship Hallelujah. him. Hallelujah. Just continue to worship God on tonight. If he's done anything for you, you ought to be giving him glory right now. You should still be giving him honor and praise right now. He's worthy, yes, you are, God. Hallelujah. For your glory, God. For your glory. I will do anything. How many of y'all will do anything to be in the presence of God? Just to see him, to behold you as your king, we thank you, Jesus. For your glory. Hallelujah.
tonight we're still in this series called survivor and I dare you to decree it with me somebody just shout I'm a survivor come on say it like you mean it with a little more vigor and vitality say I'm a survivor nobody on your road know what you survived nobody on, on, on your road on your seat or on your side knows what you survived but guess what you know that whatever has been a thorn in your flesh whatever has been the attack and the storm in your life. Malika, you know that you are a survivor. We're going to go back to the book of Exodus on tonight. Back to the book of Exodus on tonight. Same place we were on Sunday morning. I talked to you from the thought, stay calm. Talk to you from the thought, stay calm. But tonight we want to look at this uh, at a different angle coming to our midweek recharge. 
And as you begin to turn the pages to Exodus chapter number 14, Exodus chapter number 14, we find here in scripture and in the text, Deacon Isaac, that Pharaoh has let the people go. If you look at the end of chapter number 13, Pharaoh has let the people go. And now the Lord has given Moses instructions, Deacon Mike, telling the Israelites to turn back, all right, and camp by pi Haroth, and between Migdal, which is in Hebrew, which means a tower or an elevated stage or a raised bed, which means that when he told them to go there, he needed them to have some type of elevation, all right? You know, just as, as men on the watchtower, sometimes God wants us in a place where we can see the enemy coming. Oh, come on and talk to me, fresh oil. So the Lord, we, we must understand tonight, y'all, that, that how many people know that the Lord is very strategic, all right? He, he's strategic in a lot of stuff that he does. So he says if they, they turn around and go back, uh, what's going to happen is, is that the Pharaoh will begin to think they are confused. It's in the text. Y'all can read it right there in Exodus chapter number 14. He says, Pharaoh will begin to think that the Israelites are confused because he says, I, I let them go. But Sandra, they're going to turn around and come back. They seem like they're in a state of confusion. So, so they would be trapped in the wilderness. And Sunday, I told you they were in between a mountain and in the middle of a sea. That's when we were talking about, they, they were right there in between Pi Hiharoth and, and Migdal. They were in between a mountain and they were in between a sea. But they are also trapped in the wilderness tray and Pharaoh's heart is going to have to be hardened all over again, once again, uh, and chase after these Israelites. The enemy sometimes hardens his heart, hardens his heart because he sees many of you escaping the tactics and the traps and the strategies that he set for your life. But for some odd reason, Bobby, you continue to escape the very thing that the enemy tried to trap you with. Somebody ought to shout good right there. So, so here we are, here we are, they're trapped, they're in the wilderness. And in the wilderness, you know that there is nothing in the wilderness uh, for your nourishment. There's nothing in the wilderness for your protection. You're just in an open place. And you find yourself a lot of times, Sister Malika, uh, all by your lonesome. Oh, I wish I had somebody that could tell me, look, Pastor, I've been in the wilderness. I've been in the wilderness showing up to church, and I was still in the wilderness. I've been in my house praying and fasting, but I was still in the wilderness. I was singing on the praise team, Pastor, but, but I was still in the wilderness. Truth of the matter is, is that you got to respond correctly when you are in the wilderness period of your life. Because believe it or not, everybody, come on, everybody has to have some wilderness time. And when you have wilderness time, I need y'all to get this. When you have wilderness time, what it does is that it, it, it enlightens or it, it, it brightens up or it uh, increases, for better lack of words, is that it increases your relationship with Christ. Because if you're around people all the time, you're talking, you're getting all kind of advice. And I tell you a lot of times, why if you are a godly man or a godly woman, why are you going to go get a godly wisdom from an ungodly person. Y'all not with me. If you look around verse number four, we're in Exodus chapter number 14. If you look around verse number four, you will see that God has a plan. Somebody say that. Say, God has a plan. And it says this right here in verse number four in Exodus chapter number 14. And once again, I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will chase after you. Now, remind you that 
He just released them. Pharaoh just let the people go. But he says that, God says that, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will chase after you. I have planned this. Y'all see that? I have planned this in order to display my glory through Pharaoh and his whole army. After this, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So what happens? The Israelites camped there as they were told. They obeyed God. Now, I've, 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 I've been released, but now I'm going to turn around and go back. And now Pharaoh is so confused, he really does not know what to do. But, but understanding that, that, that when many times when God has plans for our life, out the beginning, the middle, the end, and all we have to do is just really follow God. Talk to me, y'all. Because a lot of times when God gives you a plan, it doesn't always look good. Talk to me, fresh oil. It doesn't always look good, but in the end, you're going to be blessed. Hear me here, y'all. In the end, you're going to be blessed. This is why it's very important for the church, the universal church, the body of Christ. This is why it's important for you to learn how to stay calm during adversity. Stay calm when the storm comes. And I know it's hard for you to stay calm uh, when, when the storm comes, but you got to learn how to stay calm when the storm comes. Why? Why is that? Who has that mic? Why is it? Why is it important? This is where the class is going to get involved. Why is it important for you to stay calm during adversity, during the storm? Why, why, why is that important? Somebody help me. Why is it important? Oh, I see. Brittany, come on. I see you scratching your head, but go ahead. She's like, should I raise my hand? Just because you can um, block future blessings that God has for you. You can block blessings, right? When, when, when you don't stay calm, understand that when, when, when storms come now, a lot of people probably complain that they say, oh, man, it's raining. But your yard is crispy. Come on, this is simple stuff. Your, your yard is crispy. You walk in the grass and it's crunch, crunch. If you don't have an irrigation system at your house, you know, you live out in the sticks like me, guess what? The grass gets hard. You know, the ground gets hard. The, the grass gets real, real, real hard and, and, and crispy, right? So, so rain and storms a lot of times is not a bad thing. Thank you, Brittany. So, so anybody else, why, why, why is it so important, Cody, why is it so important to stay calm during adversity? Because there's a lesson in it. What's the lesson? What, what, what has been your lesson? Let me put it that way. You already got the mic. You got, you got, it, you got, you got 60 seconds. Patience. Okay. That's good. Anybody else? Why, why, why is it important for you to stay calm? Here's another one, D. Right here. Oh. For me, it's important to stay calm during adversity because it helps me think clearly. Oftentimes when you're going through something in um an uneasy or an adverse situation, sometimes you act out of self. But you have to ask that question. That, that question can be answered two ways. First of all, you need to figure out if you're asking a believer or if you're asking an unbeliever. Because a believer, me, you tell me all the time, when stuff comes up, you be so cool, calm, and collected. On the outside, I am cool, calm, and collected. But on the inside, I'm probably on one million. But I have to stay calm because, number one, there are other people that are watching me. And if I'm going to be an example, a Christian example, and I'm going to be Christ-like, I have to remain calm and understand that God takes care of whatever the situation may be. 
But I know that if I stay calm, I can think clearly through the situation. Now, it may take me a minute to get there, but staying calm is beneficial because as someone said, you not only block your blessings, but depending on who you are, for you, you have to stay calm, Pastor, because it's not just you you affecting, but you affecting everybody else, and it's a domino effect. An unbeliever is not going to give you that answer. The unbeliever is going to say, I'm not going to stay calm during adversity because whatever they did to me, I'm going to do back to them. That's good. That's good. Uh, Sister Tay, as, as he comes to Sister Kay, then he'll come here too. Do you have your hand up? Okay. Uh, I want to say a lot of times when, when, when something has uh, arisen and I'm ready to be on 100 and I'm watching, I'm watching First Lady and I'm wondering why she's so quiet and I'm wondering why she's not reacting or want to react sometimes like I act. And she'll say, I'm thinking right now or I'm praying right now because you cannot immediately begin to respond because you're not going to respond in the spirit realm. You're going to respond through your flesh. Right. Y'all get what I'm saying? So so it becomes a learning experience for many of us to say, you know what, God, I know you must be getting ready to do something big because the enemy coming real hard. I'm talking about this. They're getting bolder and bolder. So you just say, God, let me just sit back because I know something's getting ready to take place. Sister Kay? I'm just going to piggyback off of her. Um, if you don't stay calm, you'll mess things up. I want to use my son passing away as an example. I did not know what to do, how to act, what to say. So the best thing for me was to be quiet and listen. And you can't hear God when you're in a ruckus. That's true. That's real. So you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta be still. Yeah. And when you are when you are still, you hear more clear. When you when 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 you're still, you hear with more clarity. Because if you don't be still and you and I, you know I don't care. I love Malika. She's gonna give me godly advice. I just believe so. But you know when you love a person, if you call them and say, "Hey, look, this is what's happening." When a person loves you, sometimes if they don't think real quick in in a spiritual realm. They're going to come to your defense because, hey, that's your friend. So you have to make sure, God, let, hold, hold on a minute, Pastor. Let me, let me gather these thoughts real quick. Now, calm down and tell me what, what happened from front to start. So you can hear what a person is saying so you can be clear with godly wisdom. The Bible tells us what, first lady, to seek wise counsel, Right? Don't seek wise counsel from unwise people or ungodly people. We got one more right here, do we not? Those of you that's watching from the Cyber Sanctuary on tonight, Latanya, help us out. What's, what, why is it so important for us to stay calm during adversity? Somebody help me out, Athena, Melinda. Y'all help me out. I want you to be involved tonight, uh, even from the Cyber Sanctuary. Why, why is it so important to be calm during adversity? Um. To stay calm during adversity, um, you have to watch because it'll take you off God's plan and purpose that he has for your life. You don't want to fall back into those old ways or habits that he brought you out of. Thank God. You don't want to fall back into those old ways, right? But, yeah. Because old ways, what, what's that saying? Old ways can't bring new blessings, something like that, you know, won't open new doors. You know, because, you know, you're going, you want to be that same old person. You cannot be that same person and expect God to bless you. All right? Bible is in the room. He responds. He says, I became of age, and I learned more and more about being calm. It's a great thing. And I'm going to say that's good because he was off the chain coming up. Yeah. Kept mama praying. Kept me afraid and scared. You know, was he going to come home alive or we going to get a phone call from the morgue? Are, are y'all hearing me? So, so, so you got to stay calm during adversity. Now, if you're not a godly person, it's going to be hard for you to stay calm. 
And one of the first things a person is going to say is, man, you done cowered out. You done punked out. Am I right, Deacon Mike? But you got, you got, you got to sit back and say, man, you know what? You know what your, your, your flesh is capable of doing. But God can handle every situation in a way that will bless you. And it teaches people to not, it teaches people to, to know that as a kingdom citizen, they have to be careful how they handle you. You know, packages say uh, fragile when they put the tape on it. It's not that you are not that you are fragile, but they have to be careful and handle you with care because you belong to the king. Are y'all with me? Um, look at adversity as a part of your your assignment. You got to stay the course, Sister Malika says. All right, you 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 got you got to stay the course because how many people know right now that you you really are in the test of your life. Talk to me, y'all. You are in the test of your life right now. You are experiencing stuff that you never thought you would have experienced in your life. And God is saying, how is she going to respond? How is she going to react? How, how are they going to uh, respond to people? How are they going to respond to their church? Because God is testing you. God is trying to take you somewhere, Sherry. And when God is trying to take you somewhere, understand that there are going to be obstacles. Are y'all with me? That there are going to be obstacles that's going to come into your life. Let's look at a couple of scriptures real quick. Whoever has the mic, I need some good readers uh, on tonight. Let's look at Jeremiah 29 and 11 to understand the plans of God in the King James Version. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Very familiar scripture, but I need you to be rebooted on tonight. Jeremiah 29 11. Don't take you long to find it because don't too many of y'all bring paper Bibles to church no more. We sure don't. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So, the Lord says he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards Sherry, that he thinks toward Chris, that he thinks towards Sonda, that he thinks towards me. But he says my thoughts are thoughts of peace. Are y'all with me? And not of evil. But he says I'm going to give you an expected end. One translation says I'm going to give you a future and a hope. And many of you do not understand when, when, when God really is planning some stuff in your life, he, he's trying to let you know that, that, that you have a great future at, ahead of you. And there's greatness in everybody's future in here. It's just how you handle life experiences. Because they're going to come. Come on here. They're they, they going to come. Your test, your test, Malika, gets, your, your faith gets tested more when you really proclaim that you are a child of God. You can sit, you can sit home and roll blunts and smoke weed and, and, and get high and drink all week. You ain't going to think nothing about that, that faith thing, really. But I'm talking about people that said, I'm a child of God. Your faith is really going to be tested. Are you hearing me? And your faith will be tested a lot of times. You know, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but there's going to be some people that's flesh and blood that operate in a demonic way that's going to try to get you thrown off kilter. Tell somebody, say, but you just got to stay calm. You just got to stay calm. Because many of y'all right now, if it, if it wasn't for God, let me talk to y'all. I want you to stay, I want you to stay clutch in the spirit realm. But if it wasn't for the grace of God on your life, there's been some time when you didn't see number red. Amen. That's just real talk. So you, you find yourself like these Israelites doing, crying out to God when Pharaoh and these Egyptians came back down the hill. We're going to get to that part in a minute. They, they became nervous and they panicked. All right? And, and that's where we are sometimes. We get caught up in a, in a place and we get caught up with our backs against the wall. And, and, and what do we do? We crumble a lot of times. And we react with our flesh. 
Romans chapter 8, verse number 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Somebody go ahead and grab Psalm 32, verse 8. Do I have a reader? No, do read it, Deacon, if you can see it, because ain't nobody, everybody's scared. And we know that all things work Stop together. right there, Sister Kay, just for a moment. Now, when you know something, you got to act like you know it. Mm -hmm. Come on here, y'all. You know, you can. Now, now, let me talk to the folk right now. You can, walk in, you can walk in on your job. You can walk in church. Nobody really knows that you're broken. Nobody really knows. Because you look like a million dollars, but nobody really knows you're having a financial crisis right now. But when you walk in the room, you come in and set the tone in the whole room. Because you don't look like what you're going through. He says, and, and we know that all things work together. When you know it, you act like you know it. Come on here, y'all. Let me just, y'all you know, so quiet tonight. Now, when you when you go get your hair done, I'm about to get carnal real quick for y'all to get involved. When you go get your hair done, nails done, everything done, done, now you fancy, huh? You know you, you got some confidence. It gives you another level of confidence. All right? Y'all can tell me, especially my sisters, when they get that hair done, they're on a whole other level with different attitudes. I know. When my wife come home and that stuff done, she got a whole nother level of attitude about her. Come on, y'all. Talk to me, y'all. The brothers get cut up, get edged up good, get that part, get that beard right. And your feet got to be right. Sometimes your head could be jacked up, but the woman look down at your feet and your shoes clean. Maybe she can help you out a little bit. You can get a haircut, get a shave and a trim, right? But K says, and we know that what, Kay? All things. You still got the mic? No, we, I need, we got an online audience. <laughs> that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. When you love God, y'all see that? It's going to work out. It may not happen right away, but when you love God, God's going to make sure that you're all right. Yeah. The thing is that God is looking at some of us and say, they said they loved me when things were going right, but when things begin to get bad in my life, they strayed away. They quit praying to me. They quit talking to me. They quit showing up to my house. But, but when you really love God, it does not matter what you go through. To our married couples, you love your spouse, there's going to be some time they're going to make you hot. But love covers a multitude of sin. Are y'all with me? Psalm 32 and 8. We're still talking about God's plans, so I need y'all to get this. Psalm 32 and 8. Somebody, anybody. Sister Alanda's going to read to y'all, but I just want to say something. Can you go back to the other scripture, Quintoya? Romans 8 and 28? For our online audience, this is the first lady talking to y'all. Okay. The scripture says, because I don't want you to miss, I want y'all, I don't want y'all to miss something. The scripture says, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. Then it says, to them who are called according to his purpose. That means everybody is not called according to his purpose. Oh, my, my, my. So 
things, all things can only work together for those who are called according to his purpose. If you are not called according to the purpose of God and the will of God, everything don't work towards your good. My, my, my. So, 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 let's talk about, real quick, let's talk about these that are, are, are called. And we're talking, about, we're not talking about collared call. No. Okay. Because the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of times God is really just calling us to live holy. Absolutely. To live saved, to live righteous. And, 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 and it, it gets a little hard sometimes, but this is why you got to make sure you're around a, a family of believers that can reel you back in when they see you. Are you hearing me? That they can reel you back in. First lady, is that it? Let's read this next one. Okay. This morning I was watching a, a segment on TV and it said, it spoke of positivity and optimism. And it said that po anybody could be positive, but uh, there's, a, there's very few people that are optimistic. Optimistic people travel with what they're doing. Positive people think. That's it. They most of the time just think. Well, you, when you're optimistic, you act. So it was saying the things like optimistic people live longer because they work at it. They want to live. I mean, I could think all day long, well, I'm, I'm going to eat a salad, but then I eat a steak. So that positive thinking doesn't help me. I need to be more optimistic. So I was, think, I was thinking when I was looking at that, and I went back and I, li I read it again. I kept, I kept running it back. It was on my TV this morning. I'm thinking, now that's, got some, that's got some value to that. So you want to be, it's okay to be positive, but it's better to be optimistic because it'll take you far. So in the word of God, be optimistic. Amen. Amen. Listen, Tanya, Latanya Corlew, she's watching, she's watching uh, down toward Dixon. And she says, she says, you got to stay calm during these times. She said, because when you stay calm, you got to make sure your, your, your video, your audio match your video. Thank you, Latanya. Come on, she said your audio has to match your video. Are you hearing me? You're saying one thing, but you're doing another. Come on, you, you're talking about one thing, but your lifestyle says something else, right? So, so you got to stay calm during these times, all right? You ready, Sister Belong? Psalm 32. I, I have it in my book, and my book says, I will instruct you and show you the way to go. With my eye on you, I will give you counsel. So you see that? God is, God is saying, he says, God can give us the instructions. All right? He can show us the way. But we have to be ready and willing to follow the instructions of God. All right? Now when we look at this, we look in the text, digging Mike, Pharaoh now, he hotter than fish grease. All right? He questions his decision, why did I let these people go? All right? Why, why have I let all these Israelite slaves go? What have I done? Pharaoh then, I want you to look in the text, he gets his chariot's teeth. He gets his people, and the Bible says that there are 600 chariots, each of them having two people. And I explained to you Sunday the simple math that there are 1,200 people coming down this hill, down this mountain, all right, in these chariots made of wood and leather. These were like the armor tanks of the Bible, all right? So he gets his chariots. He pursues them. Catches them, and watch this, Malika. And now the Israelites, they're in panic mode. Y'all see it? They are now in panic mode. What, look, watch this right here. Let me find it in the text. Look at verse number 10 in Exodus chapter number 14. It says, as Pharaoh approached the people of Israel, the people of Israel looked up, and what did they do? They panicked. Talk to me, y'all. What they do? They panicked, and when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them, they began to cry out to the Lord. 
You know how we do? We, we, we cry out to the Lord when things get heavy. We cry out to the Lord when, when the storm gets to raging, right? They cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here? You brought us out here to die in the wilderness, man. Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? But what have you done for, to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Watch this in verse 12. Did we tell you this would happen? While we were still in Egypt? They said, we told you this while we were still there. We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. Y'all see that? They, 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 they were frustrated. Deacon Mike said, why, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? And you remember back in verse number four, I let you see that God planned all of this. Mind you now, it, it, it looks bad to the Israelites, but God planned all of this. And this is what you need to know tonight. God has perfect plans for us. All right? God has perfect plans for us. Has there ever been anything in your life, and I need somebody to really be honest with me tonight, that God told you to be still with some situations? And you stayed still. You know, it was hard for you to stay still. You wanted to pull the trigger and do it. You wanted to sign the paperwork. You wanted to do it, but you waited on God and you got a better deal. Or maybe he healed your body. Anybody, have you ever had to really wait on God when you didn't want to? Can somebody give us an example of that? I want y'all to be interactive tonight. Then we're going to get out of here. Anybody? Have you ever really had to stand still? Have you... I'm actually standing still right now because in ministry, you can jump out there and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do I want to do this, I want to do that. When God speaks to you and he says, sit still and be quiet and watch, that's what I'm doing. I'm being still. Amen. And it's very, very hard to be obedient. But I know that the longer I be, be, stay obedient, I know that there is greater for me. Amen. Let, let me say this, uh, Sister Rolanda, and this is just out of uh, self-experience, is that when we get ahead of God, it equals disaster. I'm just going to be honest with you. When you get ahead of God, it equals disaster in your life. It's not going to work out how you figured it was going to work out. But if you follow the plans of God, all right, when you follow the plans of God, God will set that thing up to where you will not have to struggle in it. Are y'all with me? And, and this is the thing. God never does it all at once. He does it step by step. And this is why a lot of times we mess it up because we, we don't want God to take us step by step. We want God to do it just like that. So he does it, Trey, step by step because he wants us to be able to walk by faith and not by sight. God can't give you. That's why some of us are messed up right now. I remember I, I pretty much got everything I asked for except a motorcycle. That's why when I got grown, I bought my own. Mama, can I get these J's? Mama, can I get uh, this jacket? Mama, can I get this? What did mama do? She found some way to put that S curl in somebody's head. All right? Put that perm, that creamy crack in somebody's head. Guess what? She went and did it. Not knowing that there were struggles in times, and I'm going to tell my age right now, you remember the TVCR, right? You stuck the VCR tape in the TV. As you don't remember that, he looking like, what? <laughs> so, so she didn't let me know until probably 20-something years later. She said, boy, it took me a year to pay for that thing. Because she, she, she stuck her neck out there, should never done, did it, and said, I'm going to get it because he asked for it. Are you right? Uh, are you hearing me? So, so, so that, in short, I'm going to be honest with you, it crippled me in some ways. Because the first time she told me no, my world just crumbled. I had to get out there and grind and get it myself then. Are, are y'all with me? Y'all mighty quiet tonight. I had to get out there and get it myself, and it made me appreciate even more why I had to go get it. So, 
You may not understand God's plan for yourself, all right? Because a lot of times people will walk around in the wilderness all their life. They'll be 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. You never know the plans of your life. And you may not understand God's plan, but you got to accept them. Are y'all hearing me? You may not understand God's plan for your life, but you have to accept God's plan for your life. If you don't get nothing else tonight, you need to get that one. If you do not know the plans that God has for your life, accept the plans that he does have for your life. Ask God. You talk to God about everything else except your plan. It's always what you want. It's always what you need. It's always give me this. God, do this. But ask God, what, what, what's the plans? What's the plans that you have for me? What's the plans that you have for my life? So he can reveal it to you. All right? So I want to give you this. I want to give you this real quick. The rules of survival, Deacon Lee, and I'm, I'm, I'm coming out. The rules on survival never change. We're coming back to this next week. It's too, it's too much to unlock in this text, but I'm just respecting your time. The rules on survival never change. Whether you're in a desert or an arena, you got to trust God. Are y'all with me? The rules on survival never change, Chiquita. Whether you're in a desert or in a big arena, you have to trust God. And this is one of the things, this is one of the things. This is one of the things. Somebody said one wrong move can jeopardize your whole life. Thank you, media team, for being so tentative to our online audience. One wrong move can jeopardize your whole life. Are you hearing me? That, that's why it's important. That's why it's important. And we're about to uh, start next month getting our couples back together. It's going to be very important that you don't jump at the first I love you. We're going to talk about that next month. <laughs> Frank Herbert said this, and, and we're closing. He said, survival is the ability to swim. In strange waters. Survival is the ability to swim in strange waters. There's going to be some strange things to happen. But how are you going to respond to it? Sherry, are you going to stay calm? Come on. Sister Rhonda, are, are you going to stay calm? Knowing the things that God has planned for you? Can you stay calm during adversity? Can you stay calm when, when the enemy raises his head? Truth of the matter is when God sees that you can keep your calm and you can keep your cool, that's when some of the very things that you've been praying for in secret, God will start blessing you openly for it. And that's why many times you, you wonder, why am I going through this test? Because God knows the strength that you possess. He knows all things. He sees all things and he has all power. And many of us in this room right now, our storms will not be the same. There's going to be some hard storms. you got to stay calm. Tell somebody around you, say, stay calm. This word may not be for everybody, but guess what? Some, something's going to test you. Something's going to test you. And the Father, tonight I pray for every individual in this room and in the cyber sanctuary. God, that they learn how to hold their peace and let you fight their battle. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would order our steps in your word. God, keep us calm during adversity. Keep us calm during the storm. 
And Father, we put it all in your hands. And we trust and believe, God, that your hands will be in everything. We believe it tonight that you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think. As we get ready tonight just to sow into the word of God, I want you to put that seed on assignment tonight. And I know some of you are saying, Pastor, this is a hard week. I really need to wait till Sunday to sow this seed. I need to wait to payday. I don't even know what things looking like the rest of this week. This will be a, a sacrificial seed for you tonight. You might say, man, it's $5. I was going to need that. But I pray over the seed now that as you put it on assignment, that God returns it immeasurably and that it will accomplish for what you put it on assignment to do. God, I pray over every parishioner in this room and in the cyber sanctuary that's sowing and that's giving on tonight, that God, you will open up every closed door that has been shut in their life. And we thank you and we honor you. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Somebody from First Touch. Amen. Just y'all can just come as you want. Hallelujah. Though storms may rise, winds may blow. They carry you to places you haven't gone. Just have to learn to be still. Just stay calm and stay in His will. 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 Stay in his will. Fathers, we release from this place on tonight. I pray over every family that's in this room, every family in the cyber sanctuary, that, Lord, you will open doors for the Corlew family, that, God, you will open up doors right now for the Mitchell family, the Williams family, in the name of Jesus. God, we decree right now supernatural and divine blessings in the name of Jesus over the Harrison family, over the Beard family, over the Carr family, over the Townsend family, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we ask, Lord, that you would touch Mother Francis and Mother Blackman and Mother Majors in the name of Jesus. And God, as we leave this place tonight, our prayer is that you would not dismiss us from your presence. And we'll corporately give you the praise, give you the glory, and give you the honor. In Jesus' name, just stay calm and stay in his will. Just stay calm and stay in his will. Just stay Stay in his will. Just stay calm and stay in his will.
lift up every bowed down head on tonight. Every broken heart on tonight. In the name of Jesus. And God, plant our feet in the right places. Keep our minds on the right things. In the name of Jesus. Fresh Oil Church, we have three giving platforms. We have Cash App, we have Giveify, and you can always mail your checks in to our P.O. Box and you can give at any time. Our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 1301, Lebanon, Tennessee 37088. We hope that every seed that you sow that God multiplies it immeasurably. Join us and continue to give with us. Take care. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. We'll see you next time.